video for me. A grail watch of mine since the very beginning of my collecting career has been the 50 Fathoms. Today I have a 50 Fathoms to show you. It is an Aqualung and it is mine. This has been a grail realized for me. It's a watch that I've always wanted and finally I have one. It took a lot to get and it's a really special watch to me. It's also kind of a special watch because of who actually previously owned it. So let's flip the camera. We'll take a look at the watch. I'll talk about a little bit of the history of the 50 Fathoms and also who I actually purchased this watch from and why it's a little bit more special to me from the previous owner. So here it is. This is my 50 Fathoms Aqualung, a watch that I have been chasing for a very long time, and it's finally mine. This is definitely a grail watch for me. I'm gonna go through a little bit of the history of this watch. I'm gonna talk about how I actually purchased this watch. It's actually a very good story. And I'm gonna talk about some of the other watches that I own, like the Bathyscoff that's right there from Waltham that was made by Blancpain. So I'm gonna go through all of that. I'm gonna start with the history though, because I think that's one of the major reasons why I love the 50 Fathoms, and particularly the Aqualung and its connection to Jacques Cousteau. I kind of love that as well. So back in the 1950s, Blancpain, decided to create a dive watch, and that was mainly because of the owners at the time, Jean-Jacques Fichter, and I believe it was his aunt, Betty. They decided to make a dive watch. Jean-Jacques was a diver. He was a member of like five different dive clubs, and he had a sort of an emergency while he was diving. He ran out of oxygen, and that was because he wasn't able to time his dive properly. So he wanted to make a dive watch that could be used by civilians and the military, because navies around the world were looking for functional dive watches, and there really wasn't any available. So back in 1952, they made a prototype of the 50 Fathoms, and there's a really famous picture of Jean-Jacques Fichter wearing his 1952 prototype of the 50 Fathoms on a boat when he was gonna go diving with René Paul Jeanneret, who was actually part of Rolex. He worked at Rolex, he was the commercial director and a VP of marketing. So a lot of people think that or assume that Rolex got their idea for the Submariner from this watch. And in fact, it was Rene who went on to tell Wilsdorf to produce the Submariner. He pushed them to do it. Kind of ironic, you know, you draw the lines for yourself. And I think the history behind this watch makes this one of the most iconic dive watches of all time. It came out officially in 1953 alongside two other watches, the Zodiac Seawolf and of course the Submariner. This had three key inventions for this watch. This does not get a screwed in crown. You can see this crown is the original crown and it is sort of curved. They did that on purpose. So if you're gonna hit it against something, you don't have crown guards, but if you do hit your crown against something, uh, the chances are that it would deflect off because of that curve. When you pull the crown out, the gasket is actually on the tube, not inside the crown. Flipping the watch over, opening up the case back is the same as any other watch, any other dive watch, but this is a ring. That unscrews off, and then this is the case back. That peels off. Since this is an Aqualung and the French wanted anti-magnetism, there is a shield there for a Faraday cage. Take that off, and of course, there is a ring that goes around in a groove that is the gasket. And essentially how it works is when you screw in the case back, and I'll throw up pictures of this so you can see what I'm talking about. This extra ring that sits on the outside that holds the case back in place on top of that large gasket. And it doesn't twist the gasket when you actually screw in the case back. And essentially all that means is that you got better water resistance. And last, you got a locking bezel so you could actually use this for timing when you were underwater. They also used loom throughout the watch. They used loom in this giant Bakelite bezel. Honestly, one of the biggest Bakelite bezels I have ever seen. And then of course you have radium on the dial and I believe radium in the bezel. So this is a radioactive watch. This does have radioactive uh, properties to it. I think the half-life of radium is about 1600 years. This will be radioactive for a very long time. Also, just a note to those out there who are concerned about radium, you should be because there is real radioactivity 
on this watch. This will set off a Geiger counter. Uh, if you go to the airport, you'll get stopped. So something to keep in mind, especially if you wanna travel with your watch. Before I did mention a connection to Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau, when I was a kid, was pretty cool. And I used to watch, oh, testing, testing. Now, before I did mention the connection to Jacques Cousteau, when I was a kid, Jacques Cousteau, uh, watching a lot of his films with my dad when I was really young, it was really just amazing to me. And I always thought, wow, that's something I would love to do when I grow up. Obviously, that didn't happen. But in Silent World, all of the crew members actually wore aqua lungs. Those were 50 Fathoms that they wore. He has or had a contract with, I believe, Omega and the Proploff. However, his crew actually wore these. Really cool. And Aqualung was co-owned by Cousteau, uh, and that was essentially an outfitter for people who wanted to go diving, and they sold these watches directly through their outlets. So this is sort of like a co-branded watch. You have, of course, Blancpain, and then you have Aqualung. Awesome. It doesn't say 50 Fathoms on this watch, but of course it is a 50 Fathoms. Also last but not least is the military connection. There's a huge military connection with the 50 Fathoms. The French, the Germans, Norwegians, Israelis, Pakistanis, the Spanish, and of course the Americans all used 50 Fathoms for their Navy. Torneck Rayville, those were the ones that were actually used by the US military because they couldn't actually sell under the name Blancpain here in the United States because of the Buy US Act. So really, just a lot of history. I haven't even really touched on all of the history here. There is a lot more to talk about. But I'm gonna talk about how I actually bought this watch. Um, I bought this through Luxury Bazaar, and I actually went to their headquarters just a few days ago, and I met up with Roman Sharif. This was Roman Sharif's personal watch. He actually wore this for three years. He bought this from Menta Watches. So uh, a really cool watch uh, with some history to it. Not only obviously the history of the watch, but the history of the owner. So Menta Watches owned it and then Roman Sharif bought it. I bought it. He gave me a phenomenal price on it and I really do appreciate that. And I have to tell you, this will never leave my collection. So I'm very excited about it. So very quickly, I'm going to talk about the other watches that I have here and then I'm gonna throw this on my wrist. A few years ago, I really wanted a 50 Fathoms. I couldn't afford one. Uh, however, I really got into these watches. This is the Bathyscaphe. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bathyscaphe, so the 50 Fathoms was made for the military. The Bathyscaphe were made for civilians. It was a little bit smaller. It had a date. It still had, I think, the same water resistance. However, it wasn't as robust as the 50 Fathoms. Essentially, this was a skin diver. It was meant for people who wanted to do recreational diving and swimming, and it wasn't as serious as the 50 Fathoms, and it was sold to directly to consumers and not only through the military. So essentially what this one is, is a Waltham Bathyscaf. This was a private label for Waltham made by Blancpain. It's, it's the exact same watch as the Bathyscaf from Blancpain. However, it just says Waltham on the dial. And then of course on the case back, it says Waltham and on the movement. It has the exact same movement, the exact same dial indices. Even the Bakelite bezel is exactly the same. Really cool watch and I'm really proud to own this as well. 37.5 millimeters, so actually a pretty sizable watch when you think about it. This is a 41 millimeter watch. It's a large watch. I'm gonna do measurements really quickly just so you guys know, but it's basically 41 millimeters spot on. It's not an incredibly thick watch. And I do have this on a single pass through NATO, guys. Usually I don't like that, but I had to do it. 13 millimeters thick, so not incredibly uh, thin. 5.2 millimeters on the crown, so you do get a small crown. And then of course the lug to lug on here is a big lug to lug of 51.6. This is a watch that has been often copied and homaged. However, here it is, the original, beautiful. Uh, and then the watch that I have on my wrist, I actually have this watch on a very period correct NATO strap as well. This is another single pass through NATO in green. Uh, oh man, I love this watch as well. And there's a lot of reasons why I love it, but take a look. It looks a lot like a 50 Fathoms. Of course, you get that 16 millimeter lug span. That's really the biggest difference. I really do love this watch, and it obviously took a lot of inspiration from the 50 Fathoms, as you can see. Very quickly, I wanna show you the 50 Fathoms on my seven and a half inch wrist, and then we will wrap up this video. 
Uh, like I said, this has been a grail watch of mine for a very long time, and I am super excited to actually own this watch, and uh, hopefully, you know, I can move on to the next grail. Uh, this was a big purchase for me, so uh, let's see how that goes, but here it is. Look at that, on my seven and a half inch wrist with that green NATO strap. By the way, this is a Ralph Lauren double RL strap that I have had for about 10 years. Grail achieved. I am so excited about this. Guys, tell me what you think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of the 50 Fathoms? What do you think of the other two watches that I have here? The Mill Ships from Bulova, and of course, the uh, Bathyscaf from Waltham. These go for around $2,000 to $3,000, depending on the condition. Obviously, you can get these at a discount now for around $1,000, I believe. And obviously these are pretty expensive. I'm not even gonna get into pricing on these, but they are very, very expensive. And as you get into the more specialty versions of these like Lip, which are even more rare than the Aqualung, um, they're even more expensive. And then there's the No Radiations, which is kind of the one that I love um, the, the most, but I am very happy with the Aqualung. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.